Hey, yo, what's up, what's up, guys? Zade here with another episode of Zade's Experience. So today we're gonna be looking at my genetic report. I know it's been a long time coming, but it's finally here. So come with me and let's check this out. So first of all, guys, thanks for joining me in another episode. If you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. That really helps out the channel. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and definitely go ahead and push that notification bell. That way you guys get notified every time I come up with a video such as this. With that out of the way, I wanted to start off by saying that I know I took a bit of a long time to get this video out to you even though I've been alluding to this video for quite some time now I think since November I believe but there's been a couple of things that I've been discovering that have made it really hard for me to actually maybe go ahead and recommend some of these um, genetic testing to you guys or you know to really talk about these things and be accurate with what I am gonna say but today we're gonna go over a couple of things we're gonna go over 23andMe which is kind of the basis for everything. Then we're going to go over Prometheus, which is another um, server where you can upload your raw data from 23andMe and get a different ge genetic variation test kind of done. And then we're also going to go to foundmyfitness.com, which is a webpage by Dr. Rhonda Patrick, and I've spoken about it before in the past. But first, let's start off with 23andMe. So if you want to get any of these tests done, you need to get your genetic raw data. How do you get your genetic raw data? Um, right now, I'm only aware of two major services that definitely get your raw data, but the one that I used was 23andMe. A lot of companies don't work with Ancestry, which is the other company. These are two of the most famous ones, which is why I'm only mentioning these. But Ancestry.com doesn't really work with a lot of these other companies like Found My Fitness, Prometheus, and a couple of others. So um, that's why I went with 23andMe. They also had a sale, so that, that made it a little bit easier, you know? So what do you do to get your tests? What do you do to get your genetic raw data? So what you need to do is you need to order a kit or you can buy it actually. I think they sell them at Best Buy now. Um, you can buy a kit for 23andMe and what the kit actually has, it has this little tube that where you spit into. When you spit into it, then you close it off and it has all the instructions in it. And basically what that does, it's, it grabs your DNA from your saliva, you send it over to the guys at 23andMe and they come up with your genetics, basically. They come up with what, what your genes are, what the expression of them are, and they go into several little things, um, especially on the app, which is one what I wanted to go over. So let's start off with the 23andMe app. So as far as 23andMe goes, I really like 23andMe, but for me, it felt like it didn't have all the information that I wanted. I felt like it was very dumbed down in many ways. Uh, and I know this is a more for the average Joe kind of thing. Like, you know, I just want to get my generic genetic testing done and let's see what traits I have, what traits I don't have, what my predispositions are for. And it kind of, again, it dumbs it down quite a bit or it makes it a lot more understandable. I think about this as the iPhone kind of thing, like the iPhone platform. Microsoft, you can really go into detail. You can really go like, you know, into a deep, deep rabbit hole and open up like 20 pop-up screens really quick if you, if you are legitimately trying to get information. And 23andMe is more like Apple where you click on something, you get that, and that's all you get, like literally. But it's very clean, very cool little platform. I, I like it. I like the application um, itself. The app is pretty cool. So I ended up finding out that I'm exactly right down the middle. I am half European and half East Asian Native American. That's what this is. Uh, so for all those of you guys who have said if I was Maori, um, if I had any Japanese ancestry, if I had, you know, I, I've gotten so many things. All I see here is mainly Native American. That's 39.1%, which is so out of like that 42% for the European side, uh, I get Southern European is 38%. And out of that 38%, it's 28.2 is Spanish and Portuguese. So that's pretty high. That's kind of cool, you know? And then it has all these other like little, really small percentages, such as broadly Southern European 10.2%. Um, 
And then on the East Asian and Native American side, which is 42.4%, I have Native American, which is 39.1, which is super, super high actually. And then the rest is made out of probably East Asian and Native American and you know, a couple of other features. And that makes up the whole 42.4%. And mainly I realized that my, like the, that Native American ancestry that where it was pinpointed to was mainly Jalisco, Mexico. So that was, that was also pretty cool. And it's of no surprise to me. My grandpa was from Zacatecas, which is right next to Jalisco. And then maybe my grandpa's parents were right there from Jalisco or something like that, or maybe a couple of generations back. It all makes sense because the Spanish did come over back in the day and they did conquer Mexico. And so that kind of did happen, which explains the Spanish Portuguese ancestry pretty well so I, I had a, I had a, a, a couple of notions of that I've already explained it to you guys and so it was it was of no surprise I mean that I think that's where I get the nose from <laughs> as far as the eyes and everything else I mean I guess uh, I'll, I'll have to go with the whole Spanish Portuguese and you know broadly southern European so I, I, I mean my question is how much of this is like super accurate but uh, heck we just got to run with it so that's pretty cool it kind of gives you a little map a little layout of where each part every color is coded to like the actual map on 23andMe so it's kind of cool you know it gives you like a very visual very cool little perspective on your jeans which I think is pretty awesome now it what I thought was also pretty cool if again you're somebody that's not diving deep into the whole trade game and everything and what what you have to do to optimize yourself 23andMe has a very simple a uh, way of looking up what traits you have, what your predispositions are, and a couple of other little things, you know? So definitely once you get your test, go around the app, play with the app and see what you guys can find. Now, the second thing that I wanted to talk about was Prometheus. So Prometheus is another system where you can upload this raw data that you got from 23andMe. And basically they'll give you a more comprehensive report of what 23andMe gave you. Given I do like all the information that they give you, but I feel like it's a little bit too much and it could be really hard to digest because they just throw so much at you that for the uninitiated with this whole gene thing, it can be very daunting, very tough to go through all the information. I know it was really tough for me. And when I saw some of the stuff, it, it almost makes you panic a little bit too much. You know, it shows you so much that you're like, wait, what do you mean I have this? I have how many FTO genes? Like how many, like how pronounced is this variation? Wait, I'm gonna die in when, what? I'm more prone to this? And so it makes you go through a lot more and it's not that pre-digested. It's basically, yes, it's super comprehensive and boom, you got all the information and then you can look up some more and then you click on it and yeah. And so what's cool about Prometheus is it gives you that option and I believe right now it's actually free. So that's pretty cool on its own. So if you guys wanna go ahead and check it out, if you really wanna go in depth into everything, go for it. My thing is there's just too many genes to go over and it has all of them, but it doesn't tell you which ones are, I guess the most pronounced ones in your body, the most, it does tell you everything, like whether it's heterozygous, homozygous, or it does give you all those variations, but I think it gets a little bit too complex for the average folk. So this is where Found My Fitness from Dr. Rhonda Patrick comes in. I thought out of all the services, that one actually is the most comprehensive and at the same time, easy to digest. So it's super cool. It does cost you like, I think I think it's like 25 or 35 bucks, somewhere around there. And again, you just, what you do is you go ahead, you make an account and you upload your 23andMe raw data. You upload it to the server. It, you go ahead and you pay for it. And then it gives you several different types of reports. And what's really cool about it is that it has an overall encompassing um, comprehensive report. And that one actually has everything, which is what I got right here. And it's super, super cool because it, it gives you literally like what the gene is, what the SNP is of the gene, the, the SNP variation, and then the status. Um, so for my first one, it's 
the first one that actually comes up in my um, testing is SH2B3. That's the gene. The snippet is um, RS3184, blah, 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 blah. and then it actually says if it's homozygous or heterozygous or how how prevalent is this and it's CT so it's it's not that prevalent it's it's kind of right in between and the status of it is slight increase risk for celiac disease so that's pretty cool and then it gives you more information on the side so it has different tables so it's boom 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 and then the information about it, it tells you what the gene does and then some notes for it at the bottom which is really cool and if you want to learn more it has a hyperlink at the bottom which you can click on if you're on your computer and you can learn more about that particular gene so you go through all that here and that's what you basically get. So my, the, the, the one I really, really recommend is the Rhonda Patrick one. Yeah, sure, you're gonna use a couple, like whatever 23andMe cost you, depending on which test you got. Um, I know that when I got it, I think it was a hundred bucks. There was a, a really cool sale and that was for like the 200 buck one, like the most expensive one. So I was like, let's go for it, let's do this. And the Prometheus, I believe, is free right now, and the Ronda Patrick is 25 to 35 bucks. So, if you were gonna get uh, the 23andMe, and let's say you did get it on sale just like I did, it would be 100 bucks for that, and then the 25 or 35 bucks, so it would be 100, 125 to 135 bucks to get a super comprehensive report, and you can put it through Prometheus, anyways. So, just having that raw data from 23andMe, I think, is what really counts because there's other places like Strategene, which I also uh, put my my raw data through and that one's an extra 45 bucks that one's a little bit different and I'll talk about it in a different G in a different video but I think it's really cool to just kind of obtain your data from 23andMe a lot of people don't work with ancestry.com so I highly recommend that you do it to through 23andMe again I'm not sponsored by these guys I'm not sponsored by found my fitness or anything like that or Prometheus but I think this is a good valuable tool for you guys it's a good resource if you guys are looking into your genome and what your predispositions are what you are more likely to do like you know what steps to take to better your health it's really cool to have and it really does empower you to do a lot more but in any case guys thanks for joining me in another episode of Sage experience if you like this video please go ahead comment like and subscribe you guys know the deal push that notification bell if you haven't already done so and definitely push that like button if you haven't already done so on the next video i'm going to go over these genes and what i thought was the most important thing for me what my my specific genetic variation is that way you guys can take a look and it gave me a great insight as to why maybe the carnivore diet wasn't particularly working as well for me as it would have worked for maybe somebody else um and if everybody should do the carnivore diet or if anybody should go keto so again i'll go over that on the next video uh, i should be coming with up with it pretty soon again i got everything now so let's make that happen i also got the boundless book um, which is amazing guys. I highly highly recommend this boundless book. I got it signed. I went up to Santa Monica um, Got it signed for the on the book release by Ben Greenfield in himself. So Super awesome super stoked about that some really really awesome information um, This is where I got the information to go ahead and do the strategy one So that's what Ben recommends to do the strategy one um, But there is a little bit of a learning curve with that. So more on that on the next couple of videos but this has gone long enough. Say it out. Peace.